everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, everyone likes a success story, especially around the holidays when people are not necessarily following their eating plan 100% and maybe having symptoms of some of their previous lifestyle diseases, putting on weight. Well, we have a wonderful story for you today. Both these guests have been on the show before. But what's interesting is I did not know them at the time. You know, most of the guests on Chef AJ Live, I'm meeting for the first time when they come on the show, but they're so inspiring. I actually moved to where they live to be friends with them so we could create our own little blue zone. You may know them from their own YouTube channels or other things that they do, their Facebook groups. But back today, we have... Esther Loveridge and Al Schmidt, who in their 70s and 80s reversed their heart disease as well as other diseases, lost over 150 pounds combined. Please welcome them back to the show. How are you, dynamic duo? Uh, (laughs) Returns, yes, we are wonderful. And what amazes me that you not only moved near us and you got to know us, but you actually invited us back on your show. That's the amazing part. (laughs) And to my house for dinner. It's so wonderful. I just don't know. I I, usually I drive. Oops, there we go. She forgot to turn her phone off. Yeah, that's okay. That was my daughter-in-law who wanted to meet you while she was here. (laughs) It's so great having dinner with you guys, or because we don't have to like ask what's in here. Can we eat this? You know. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah, I know it's really nice. Yeah, and it was really fun too. Is when you finally have somebody in your family who's also gone vegan, like my my daughter and my son and daughter in law just left this morning after spending a week with us, and it was still kind of nerve wracking deciding what to serve them. But I had nothing non compliant in the house, and they were very happy. Yeah, and even their dog went be. Went to, got Linda Middlesworth dog food this week. Yeah. And they're converting their dog over to be a V dog. Oh my God, that's amazing. Well, guys, not everybody may have seen the first two episodes that we did together. So do you want to tell your stories, ladies first? Okay. Well, my story started six and a half years ago. Uh, I was in Ireland on a trip and my knees were hurting so bad. By the time I finished that That trip, I thought, I can't even make it to the gate at the airport. But anyway, long story short, we had another trip planned to China in the fall. And I thought, how in the world am I going to do? Now, mind you, I was morbidly obese. I weighed 257 pounds. And I had lots of diseases. But I didn't think I was sick. And I didn't think there was anything wrong. I just, my knees. So I went to the doctor and he said, well, I can either give you uh, cortisone shots, or you can continue taking pain medication, or he said, I could refer you to uh, orthopedics for a possible knee replacement. And then he dropped the bomb, which was, but you have to lose 70 pounds first. Well, I didn't, I couldn't imagine how that could happen. I was, had gotten down to 220 before, but 70 pounds would take me under 200, which had been my goal. Anyway, Right at that time, I do believe in divine order. And my really good friend, Nora, she gave me Dr. McDougall's book, The McDougall Program for Maximum Weight Loss. And I decided I would just jump in 100% and give it a test. I would be my own laboratory. So I just jumped in and followed that program. And the results started happening so quickly. And we made it to China in the fall and have continued on this journey ever since. And I couldn't be happier. My whole life has changed at the age of 72. So it's never too late. It's always possible. And it's a challenging program to follow. But I knew if I wanted to do the test like an experiment and have my body be my own uh, lab, that I would have to follow it and do it. And that was the program that worked for me. And that's what I am so happy to share with everyone. It's and just a Tell wonderful. them your uh, what Facebook. Oh, well, then after uh, after a while, the, the ladies at the gym started noticing, you know, of my success and wanted to know about it. And one dear lady named Robin said, Esther, you need to start a group on Facebook. And I said, no, I just need to tell people to watch Chef AJ, listen to Dr. McDougall, listen to Doug Lyle, and they'll learn the way to go. I don't need to reinvent the wheel. And she said, no, you need to start a group. So I went home and I thought about it. And I thought, well, OK, so I did. And we started out with maybe six people. And now there's, what, 15,300? 
So it keeps growing and I'm just there to support people and to, you know, just be one more voice in the choir about how you can create the life you want. You make the decisions, you've got the brain, you've got the mind and uh, you get to create your own world. So I just take pictures of everything I eat and post it every day. I do a video every day and show how to use the Instant Pot, which has been a wonderful, wonderful tool to use. And that's what I'm all about, just sharing the word. Every day you post a video to the, I didn't realize I should join your group for inspiration. <laughs> an idea. And 16,000 people, it's incredible. Yeah, only 15.3. Oh, 15.3. Well, that, okay. But yeah. still, I mean, how do you have time for that? Well, I start about three or four in the morning. Oh, and I also write a new word every day, like in my book. And so then I, uh, I post that book in Esther's Nutritional Journey. And then I go back and I post what I wrote in 2021, 20, and 19, because we have new people and maybe they didn't read those words that were important before. And that way they can just, and so they don't even have to buy my book, just join Esther's Nutritional Journey and read it there. Well, do you have your book or do, maybe I can get Charles to grab it for me from the closet. I'd love to show your book. She, oh. she forgot to bring it, didn't I, I didn't think And I bet you forgot to bring your story in Women's Day magazine too, which I could have grabbed, but now I'm on the show. So yes, I yes, yes, I did it. How, how did they find you in Women's Day? That's pretty amazing. Um, I was in one of the Google groups on Facebook and there was a woman from the East Coast. Let's see if I can remember her name. And she uh, she put a post on one of the Google like friends group. And she said, is there anybody who's over 70 years old that's lost over 100 pounds and on a plant-based diet? And so I responded to her. And so she she um, connected me with uh, Women's World Magazine. And then later, Women's World Magazine asked me if I knew anyone else who had done that. So I referred Margie Burton to them. And she got to be on the cover also. So I've been in three times now to Women's World Magazine. And um, and then what's exciting is, you know, Ben, my husband, who started following this eating program, uh, he lost all of his weight and his diseases. And uh, we both got to have our stories in Dr. Scott Stoll, who you've had on your program. Uh, they He, he and um, per, Dan Purgis wrote a book in December called Disease Reversal Hope. And our stories in that book, too. So it's just fun to be an example of what a new life we can have through eating plant-based food you know it's our wonderful. future is in our own hands that's right we are yes we are creating our world with every bite we take well you talk a lot about that in your book from this cute title from potatoes to donuts no the other way sure <laughs> the other from way donuts to potatoes oh okay that's right <laughs> i said it backwards <laughs> I'm dyslexic from donuts to potatoes is what yeah. most people are doing, which is causing them to be so overweight. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's funny. Well, did you ever think that you'd have this kind of success and in, in, in your, you know, seventh decade? Because what I think is amazing, Esther, not just that you lost over hundred pounds, but that you kept it off. Oh yes. Yes. That is seven years. That, that is, you know, six years in July. Wow. So it took me three years. I lost 85 the first year and then 25 the next year and 25 the third year. And I've kept it all off for the last three and a half years. So it does attest to the uh, advocacy of that program. It's just, it really works. Had you always struggled with your weight and did you ever uh, take weight off before? Oh yes. I, I could get down to 220. I'd been at 282 at one a couple of times, and I could get down to 220. And I'd been on the Atkins diet, and that nearly killed me with pancreatitis and gallbladder. And no one ever said to me, Esther, it's the fat you're eating that's causing all of these diseases. Um, yeah, and I've been to Tops Take Off Pound Sensibly. I've been to Overeaters Anonymous. I've been to Weight Watchers. I'd been to a 600 calorie day program. Uh, I went to the diet center in Sacramento for a while and I, I would lose it, but then I didn't have the skill set that I learned through you and Doug Lyle and Dr. McDougall of how to stay on the program. And like Doug Lyle says, you know, we might never be able to add back into our diet the food that we gave up to get our success. And so Dr. McDougall says, you don't start adding back foods that are whole food plant-based, but not like not, not as austere as his program, which is no olives of avocado, seeds, nuts, and soy products, because those are healthy foods, but high in fat. 
So his program is more restricted, but it's the answer for me because by going that, to that program, I was able to get the, get the weight off quickly and get rid of all my medications, except now I'm on 25 units of um, levothyroxine because my numbers did start. But I was off of that for a couple of years too. It so, improved your eyesight. Oh yeah, my eyesight, forgot about that. I don't have to wear glasses anymore. That's incredible. I mean, it's just, and I was being watched for a macular pucker and after I told the doctor at first, I said, well, you know, um, he said I, I was now ready for surgery. And I said, well, you know, three months ago, I started eating a plant-based diet. And where I got this idea, Chef AG, I don't know. But I thought if it helps all of your body, all of your organs, all the diseases, why wouldn't it help my eyes too? And so he said, no, I didn't have to have surgery then. Come back in six months. So in six months, I came back and he said, your eyesight's improved. Six months later, I came back and said, your eyesight's improved. And then finally, I said, well, do you think I should wear my glasses to protect my eyes? And finally, after a couple of years, he said, with your eyesight, you don't need to wear glasses. So I went down to DMV when my registration came up again, my license, and they took it off of my license. It wow. had been on there for 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> so it just is, it's just unbelievable what the body wants to do. It wants to be well. If we can just get out of the way. The body has an incredible ability to heal itself yes. if you'll just let it. Yes, yes. So wow. it's just, yeah, no, in answer to your question, I never dreamed I would be in a position to influence anybody else or help to encourage them. And it's given my whole life a new purpose. And I love it. I love everything about my life. And I'm glad you moved up north. Yes. Wow. Did, um, are you still in touch with the lady that originally gave you Dr. McDougall's book? Oh, yes, every day. Oh, yes, yes. She's my little angel because she was doing some research to find out um, how not to get diabetes. And she had come across Neil Bernard's book. And then she uh, she loved me and was thinking about me. And she remembered hearing about Dr. McDougall years ago. And she told another friend, oh, it's not for us. And then why she... While she was doing that research, looking for help on her diabetes or pre-diabetes, she came across this book and she gave me the book. I didn't have to pay for it. And then she started giving me some of the DVDs, you know, and then I got connected with you. And it's just been, uh, I was going to say a roller coaster, but not a roller coaster. It's been like climb, climb up Sunshine Mountain, you know, just it keeps getting better every day, every day. You know, I've heard of a lot of things reversing, but I have not heard of not being able to wear glasses before. Yes, yeah. I think you had someone on your show not too long ago where she was doing exercises and things like that with the eyes. I don't remember her name. Yep. And, mm -hmm. and that was kind of interesting, but I didn't have to do anything. And then I got to tell my ophthalmologist at Kaiser about it. And he listened to my whole story. And I think he started doing more plant-based. And he said to me, keep eating your greens. And uh, yeah. it was kind of funny because my other older son came over this week to see my younger son who was visiting and I was mentioning something about my eyes as they all, all were putting their glasses on. And I, I said something about carrots. And he said, no, I said, carrots don't help your eyesight. And then I wish I would have said to him, well, then to what do you contribute to my eyesight improvement? And I have, not only do I still have cataracts, but I have a macular pucker. And I also have this thing called pseudo exfoliation in my eyes. But who cares what you call it if I yeah, can see? You can see that. Yeah. That count. So it's just, so I just keep on going. Well, you're incredible. So, Al, what about yes. you? You're a little bit older. You're going to be 88 in like 88 two weeks. In uh, 20 days. Well, I don't have, I don't do Facebook. I barely do this, but I have a really good website, Staying Alive, Whole Food Plant Based, or the initials. And I've had, coronary artery disease my whole life. My father passed away at 59 and he was it, you, it, he was a carnivore extraordinary. He, it wasn't a meal unless you had meat at it, sure. everything. And it had to be the marble. We came from Chicago and it had to be the marbled meat, oh, not yeah. just any kind of meat. So I when I was um, in 1984, I was what, probably in my 40s, 49 or 50, I had five vessel bypass surgery. And that was 
to traumatic to say the least. It was like they put me in a gunny sack. All my ex-wives came and beat the daylights out of me. And then they threw me down the stairs. I hurt for the longest time. Now, of course, medical science has a way that they can come up through your elbow or your groin and they can do all that jiggling in there. And then you're free to go back and continue your bad ways. I That was so traumatic to me. I thought, I never want to go through that again. So I searched around. I didn't know about McDougal. Now, he was around then, but I didn't know about him. So I just figured what little bit of knowledge I have that fat was bad for you. So I decided to limit my fat intake. So I, the average person then and now, probably it's worse, eats about 35 to 45% of, per day of fat in their diet, percent of calories. That's a lot. And I thought, well, I can do better than that. So I said, I'm going to limit it to 20 or 25%. And I did that um, until <laughs> more problems happened. But it also kept my weight down. I never had a weight problem. Um, you know, I was uh, 5'11", and probably I was weighing 175, 170, and I'd bounce around. I'd watch the scale, and I'd go, but I never, you know, I also did portion control, never had seconds, and uh, I, and watching my fat intake, basically, that's all I did. So that went along fine, but then I started to have problems. And uh, I had another heart attack. I had two more stints put in. Oh, I've had tons of stints put in. So when I was 80 years old, you were a young thing at 72. <laughs> when I was 80 years old, I was having terrible chest pains. I couldn't walk. I had to put stair lifts in my house. I have a two-story house. And it was cheaper to put stair lifts in than it was to sell a house and buy a new one. And um, I just, I was on the way out. So uh, I went to a meeting at Kaiser. I had just had a stint put in. I couldn't fly back to, to a wedding I was supposed to go to in Wisconsin. In fact, I was housebound. I was, they had a wedding in LA that I couldn't drive to because I was terrified to go out of the house. I, I, I felt like I always had to be near at an emergency room. I didn't know where they were on the way down there. And it's a horrible feeling. You're, you're just waiting for the big one to drop on you. And so I went to this meeting <laughs> and, and this is politically incorrect, but you know, I do that. <laughs> so a, uh, the, 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 first half of the, the first half of the meeting was exercise. We want you to exercise to get your heart rate up. I said, get it up. I just want <laughs> to continue to go. That's my goal in life. And they said, oh, no, you got it. Well, I couldn't exercise. I, I mean, Dottie had to drive me to the meeting. And then I walked like a little old man, you know, little tiny baby steps. And I was only 80, you know. <laughs> so so uh, I get there and I sit down and the first half is exercise. They tell me to do it. I, can't, I know I can't do it. I get super depressed. I looked up to see the curve. I mean, I was so depressed. So the second half was on eating. And I thought, well, on diet, okay, I changed my diet 20 some years ago. At least that's something I can do. I have control over that. So he comes out and he says, we're gonna talk. <laughs> this lady waddles out. We're gonna talk about whole food, plant-based diet. And she was huge. And I'm thinking, oh my God, bury me now. <laughs> but she said, well, I'm not on the diet. And I thought, okay, now I'll listen. And she took all these pictures out. And one of the pictures was an angiogram, which if you know what that is, they look into your heart. And I've seen a lot of those. And it was a before and after picture, only 30 months, not even three years. And at this point, my life expectancy was in months, not mm -hmm. years. So I'm thinking 30 months, I don't know if I can live that long, but you know what? I can change my diet now. So I did. You, I made the decision I wanted to live. That was a real easy, to, you want to live or you want to die? I think I'll take, choose living. Thank you very much. 
So I did. And in two months, I went on the diet. It was hard. It took me probably a week or two to get that. I'd, I'd go in and order, a, you know, I used to eat chicken burritos. I love Mexican food. So I get a chicken burrito again. I told my buddies that, you know, while I was on, they said, well, uh, I said, I can't have chicken t this week. I'm going to have a vegetable burrito. That's because that's I'm on this whole food plant-based diet. So the guy looks at it and he says, you know, they sought to, no oil also. Oh. Yeah, um, Eshelston, Dr. Eshelston's book saved my life. It's how to prevent and reverse heart disease, the key word being reversed. And it says, he says, no oil at all and keep your fat intake under 10%. Well, my goal had been 20, 25, so 10. That was hard, but I knew where I was going. So the guy, and I told my buddies this, and my guy said, well, you know, that thing is, uh, th those vegetables are fried in oil. I'm going, ah. So I send it back and I get one with no oil. Oh, okay, we'll give it to you no oil. And then he tells me after I've taken two bites, he says, well, you know, all the lards in the burrito, I'm going, oh. Uh, anyway, I it, uh, Dr. Gregor wrote a book, How Not to Die. And the reason that he got into medicine is because his grandmother, who was a young thing at 65, she, after three weeks, on the whole food plant-based diet. She went to Pritikin's Institute and she managed in three weeks to walk 10 miles. So it took me four weeks because I'm a little slow. And in four weeks, I could climb stairs. I, I went to Tahoe at 6,000 feet and I could walk a mile. Before that, I couldn't walk to the mailbox. So it was an incredible result for me. Uh, my results were I first, I didn't try to lose weight, but I started off this diet a little heavy. I was 180 and I got in two months, I got it down to 150. My cholesterol went from 250 to 150. And Eshelston says, Dr. Eshelston says that if it's under 150, you don't have to worry about getting a heart attack. Oh, that was great. Now, here's the big one. Not only did that, uh, my cholesterol went down, my kidney function was at 40%. Oops, froze. Yeah. Sorry. That's yeah. okay, you froze for a minute. So just said your cholesterol was? Oh, my cholesterol was 250. And that came down uh, to 150. But my kidney functions, my kidneys were functioning at 40%. And I had that had gone to Kaiser and they said, don't eat salt. Don't do this. Don't take this. Don't take that. So I had really watched that. But and they said, it'll never, your kidneys will never get better. That's conventional wisdom. So two after two, and I wasn't worried about them. I was worried about my heart. Sure. Yeah. I wasn't worried about my weight. I was worried about my heart. So after two weeks, I go in, my, my wife and my best friend say, God, Al, you look terrible. <laughs> you, you look like you're, you know, you're so skinny. Americans have fat eyes. <laughs> we see we see fat in people say, oh, that's lovely. So uh, they sent me to the doctor. He says, well, I'm going to give you a blood test. Come back next week. After I got the results, I come back next week. And he said, well, your cholesterol's down. Oh, good. This is not oh, good. And your kidneys are back to normal. I said, what do you mean? Wait, wait. <laughs> They're normal? He said, yeah. And I said, well, that can't be right. You told me that, you know, when you sent me to the class that they don't, they don't ever get better. <laughs> he didn't know. So they took it again. And sure enough, my kidneys are at normal. And um, that was amazing to a lot of people, including a a friend of mine that has a PhD in nursing, Maureen, and she, if you go to my website or go to my YouTube channel, I have uh, for, uh, she had got her PhD and she presented a short 14 minute video on uh, kidney recovery. And, and if people would eat healthy, how it wouldn't hurt their kidneys and how much money uh, she was so, so you're in, uh, I'm on heart disease, you're on uh, weight, and she's on the kidneys. We got to try out three of us. Yeah, she's great. Uh, so anyway, 
Um, there is all sorts of other things that have improved in my life. Uh, and I have to, the reason that I'm so fond of Esther is that she and I started this lifestyle the same month in yeah. 2015. I 16. 16, 16, 16, thank you. And so she had a one year celebration, which I crashed. <laughs> And uh, along with uh, Tammy and Tom, uh, is that how you guys? I was curious how you guys met and became besties. Yeah, yeah. And well, yeah, we were having a little gathering at Whole Foods for lunch, you know. And I just invited some people that were in my group because they wanted. This was before 2020, you know. And people wanted to be together, and so that we we met there. And then uh, Tammy and Tom came and crashed the party. And then they invited, well, they invited me. I thought they had been. You had invited them. I really didn't. Know. Yeah. And and Al came, and we just met briefly, but really very briefly. Very but briefly. I I asked her about two or three questions, and I knew there was a kindred spirit. This was a little sister I never, annoying little sister <laughs> I never <laughs> knew I had. And so we just hit it off ever since then. Yeah, um, that is funny. Hey, Alan, I'm curious. You 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 did lose weight when you went on this diet. Were you ever? You didn't. Did you struggle with your weight? Were you particularly overweight most no, of your I life? Want, no, I, as I mentioned, um, if you watch your, the fat you eat, as Dr. McDougall said, is the fat you wear. So if you watch what you eat, you don't have to watch the scales. And I mean, Esther knows this as well as or better than I do, probably. No, I never did. Although I, I, I loved, I had terrible sweet tooth and I loved desserts, but I would not eat any fattening food. Uh, I ate, which I don't eat now, things like avocados and all, but they were relatively healthy. And I had let my weight get up to about 180. And I watched, I, I've always, when I was young in my 20s, I got over 200 pounds and I was in the service and I was working for a captain and he just gave me a minute, he called me blubber. And he shamed the devil out of me. And so I thought, well, I'll show him. So just using portion control, because I didn't know anything else. And I was in my 25, 26. And I just lost it all. I came back down to 170, 75. And uh, he, he said, well, I guess I can't call you a blubber anymore. I said, no, wow. sir. <laughs> <laughs> so no, wait, it's never been that much of an issue for me. I love to eat, but... You know, it's just, but you did definitely lose weight when you adopted. I lost, I lost 40 pounds in two months and I weighed the scale this morning. I weighed the scale. I got <laughs> on the scale and I weighed 135. So I've not only kept the weight <laughs> off, I've lost another uh, 15 pounds over the another five, six, five and a half, six years. So yeah, this diet is, and it's, you have so much energy. I have to tell you this, this, and it's God's honest truth. The five years after I was on this diet, I've been having some issues lately because I'm old, because I'm 88, but uh, the, the best five years of my life, uh, uh, well, no, the last five years have been better than any five years in the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. They're better than anything in the 70s and the 60s, without a doubt. Uh, because you just I, you, you just feel good. You have all this tremendous energy. And I've yet to meet someone on this lifestyle. And we know, you and I know, and uh, AJ know a lot of people that doesn't have more energy than they used to have. If for no other reason, if you're in, in your middle age and you're just trying to get on this lifestyle, it will give you tons of energy. Yeah. So, well, and then when you have the freedom from food addiction, I mean, that is amazing how it lifts your spirits. And, you know, because being a lifetime dieter, um, you know, I would feel so excited to try a new diet, the next thing. But then, you know, as we all know, you lose the weight and then you gain that back and then even more. And, and, I, I, and I know you're the same way. You don't miss the things that you think you used to. No. Most of the things that I, I'm speaking personally now, most of the things that I desired that I was quote unquote addicted to, they're 
were not satiating. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't fulfill you. Yeah, but I mean, mentally, there's such a relief to finally find the answer that uh, lasts a lifetime. Because for me, you know, I would lose it and I would feel good and then I'd gain it back. And then I'd feel so much self-condemnation. And I think that's kind of why today I wanted to talk a little bit about compassion because uh, we sometimes are our own worst enemy and we're so hard on ourselves. We yes. think we should be able to do it. And it's really impossible to do it until you have the right tools. Because you just don't know what works, and everything. Well, you, you said we're too hard on ourselves. Yes. You and I meet a lot of people that are just starting in the journey, and they they want to do it, and they they have the desire, and they say, "Yeah, but I, I can't give up this." And I say, "Well, give up what you can." Yeah. You know, and like you say, don't beat yourself down. Nobody right. is is perfect. Yeah, I think even Dean Ornish and his wife they say. What are you willing to do? Well, to start off with, and the thing about this lifestyle is it's so self-rewarding. Yes. Once you get into it, you feel, oh, I feel so good. Why would I want to eat that uh, yak fat smothered in uh, lard? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you just don't. You, you, well, and then Chef AJ, she's condensed it down into her uh, calorie density. Chart. Yes. And that is a wonderful tool to have because it shows you the uh, low calorie dense food which would be your you know your lettuce and your yes. starchy vegetables and as you move up the line to include fruit and grains and potatoes which we love then if you cross that line you know and you get into other foods they can be considered whole foods but they're high in calories they are yes like and avocados it, yeah and nuts and seeds and, nuts and seeds uh, yeah. bread and pasta and yeah all of that and they're tasty yeah but they're not uh, yeah yeah and then you know and like the glial says you know, that we're naturally uh, drawn to the most calorie dense yes. food in our environment. All but, animals. So as Chef yes. AJ says, if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. Yeah. And so if you, maybe you live with somebody that is about following this lifestyle and, and all I can say is glory be, I, I honor you for doing it. But when they're, when the food's in the house, it's just nearly impossible. Yeah. I mean, you have to, you do have to use willpower then, but if none of those high calorie dense foods are in your house, you can eat whatever you want, as often as you want, as much as you want, and never will gain the weight back because you just burn up the calories that's in that lower and you can eat to satiety, yeah. which is wonderful. So yeah, I, it is. some days I might and eat you, potatoes. And you feel satiated. And right. There's two things that I want to say that I think are essential. The first is, with people like you and I and AJ and many, many hundreds more. There's a lot of help out there. I know when I started, I had no direction and no support. And the second thing is support. The, um, we have a local guru here uh, and he says, if you look at your five closest friends, you all have the same values, you all have the same interests, you have the same desires, you have the same almost everything. And those people will, you support and influence each other. So I, got, I had to get rid of all my carnivore friends. <laughs> and, and you and I have started a whole bunch of groups here in Sacramento and su surround yourself with with uh, whole food plant-based people because they will support you mm -hmm. they understand what you're going through because they went through it and they also understand how rewarding it is which yes. you don't want to hear that you don't want to hear how hard you don't want uh, i mean i i hate to i like to be realistic because it isn't easy but it's so rewarding yeah. that once you, like you and I, after six and a half years, it, it comes, it's second nature to mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. I, you don't have any desires to eat anything. No, no, oh, no. don't you miss sirloin? Not a bit. Oh, no, no animal, no dairy. Yeah. So if I'm and, tempted at all, it might be some vegan um, t sweets, you know, or yeah. desserts. Well, yeah. but, but even those I've noticed when I do partake, uh, they don't give me the dopamine hit that the no, rich yeah. things. And so it's not like, um, you know, going off the wagon. Yeah. You know, I, I, I will cheat once in a while and take just a little tiny piece of avocado, oh, which I love. But I, I really don't eat 
I, I, that, that's it. I'm. I have to restrict myself right, because, because I do of your like, heart. Yeah, yeah, and I I do eat more than you do on yes, that, but you, do. you know, but it's uh, the rewards are so great. And I guess what I really want to emphasize too is it's so easy in any group of people to look for the things that separate us. And I think what's really important yes. is that we all come together knowing that we have different personalities, we have different strengths and weaknesses, but we need to go to the core of what unites us all and gives us unity. Because, you know, you might follow one doctor and he says, do this, and the other one does this. And I say, pick a hero and follow that. Yeah, that's Because good. it's really easy to play one authority figure against another to find excuses for what you really want to do. And abstinence is the key for me. I mean, I just see myself like an alcoholic. I could never say, well, I'll I'll stay on this program Monday through Friday, but I deserve to have a drink on the weekends. Yeah. And some people do this program and include that, and I embrace them and love them too. We can't, we're not going to all be cookie cutters of each other. You know, we have our differences. But I think in terms of the movement, I think we need to really be loving. In fact, I wore my Be Kind shirt today. Because, um, you know, we can even, there can even be jealousies in a group, there can be competition, and we don't, we don't need that. We just need to love each other and know that we're all on this journey. We're all here for a Support. reason. And uh, to not try to mold somebody else into our, our yeah. journey. You know? Or do it our way. Yeah. I'm curious. Uh, first of all, everybody's saying how amazing you look, Al. They can't believe you're 88. Did either of you wish you had had this information sooner? Are you angry that you didn't? And do you think if you had it, you would have followed it earlier in your lives? I think that's not productive to do things like that. I mean, there's. I wish I had all the money I have now when I was 20. I wish I had all the wisdom I have now when I was 20. I mean, that it doesn't do you any good. What are you going to do from now on? If this is available to you, are you going to take the chance? Uh, I mean, to me, that's a useless yeah. my, my mental masturbation, I call it. It's yeah. a mind game. That I don't need yeah. that. So I, I don't want to answer that. You can yeah. take it if you well, want. Well, I've learned from Wayne Dyer that we can't woulda, coulda, shoulda. Yeah. We can't should on ourselves. You know, and, and that and we don't have the, it doesn't, like you said, it doesn't do any good. You are where you are now. And I think the wisdom and the understanding that we gain where we are now was the right timing. I think there's a time for everything. And I'm just really thankful that, that I learned it now when I really needed it. And uh, no, I, I, I do believe in perfect timing. Yeah. James Cavell in the, the, the novel Shogun said, Never worry about something you have no control over. That's right. And so I have no control over the past. So why would I worry about yeah. it? It's well, like, I, let me rephrase the question. I don't okay. like, were you upset? But do you think that you would have possibly followed it? Because some people like, you know, when I think about my past, I think I was so addicted that I, I would, I mean, I had this, let me put it this way. I had this information. I knew, I knew of Dr. McDougall, but I was so addicted and so stuck in the pleasure trap that I chose not to. So, so can you answer that question? You understand what I'm saying? Were yeah, you? Yeah, no, things? I don't understand. I, I see what, what, what it did, what worked for me was, it, you know, it wasn't the fact that I was 282 pounds. It didn't matter to me that I had diverticulitis, I had sleep apnea, I had highs and lows, I had diverticulitis, I had uh, all of these illnesses. That didn't bother me. What, what got my attention was if this was going to stop me from traveling. Yeah. That was that was what got me. Not my health and not even my weight because Ben was fat too and we looked pretty good together. You know, if we stood up straight. Yeah, no, you but, you know, a handsome but if, large couple. Yes. <laughs> but if it, if it, if if this problem with my knees was going to cause me not to continue to travel, that's what got my attention. And I think for you as a heart attack for somebody else, it might be diabetes and threatening to go to dialysis or something. We all have that that uh, critical point. Like, like Doug Lyle says, you know, everything is a cost benefit analysis. And if I could have continued eating all my ice cream sundaes and my seeds candy and all that and still traveled, I'd probably still be doing that. As Dr. Goldhammer says, it's about the quality of your life 
I don't want to just yeah. exist. I don't want to be here and not be able, like you thought, to be able to. I wanted to be here. I wanted to stay yeah. here. But now at 88, I don't want to be a cripple. I don't want to be somebody that just sits in a chair and watches TV all day. Yeah. I want to be able to hike like I did last year at 11,000 feet. I want to be able to do things. I want to be able to use the energy that I have. Yeah. And so and we both want to pay it forward. We do. We want yeah. to pay it. God has not had decided not to take me uh, seven years ago. And so he wants me here to continue to annoy people yeah. to send out my message. Yeah, so that's, that's what great. I do. Yeah. And by the way, I did not have to have my knee replaced. So that was yes. good. So another and one. I have younger yes. people in my family getting their hips replaced, getting their knees and replaced. And you have an excellent quality of life. Oh, yeah. You know, when I was 80, at your age, I didn't have the the energy and the ability to do the things that you do, yeah. but I don't dwell on that. I dwell on where I am now. Yeah, you go live in the, live in the yeah. now. Yeah, this if if this day was your last day, what would you want to do? What I'm doing now. That's right. There you go. That's right. Continue on. Yeah. You both mentioned about of uh, not having temptation, about abstinence. Did, do you, either of you have anything in your house that would be triggering for you? Oh, hell yes. My, really? Oh, yeah. Dottie, bless her heart. She did not get on board of this right away. And she still isn't on board to the extent that I am. Because but we can't judge, remember? I know, I know. You keep telling me that. <laughs> but yeah, and, but she has all of her friends and a lot of both of our family who are not on this. So I can take you to the, to the, uh, uh, right here to the pantry and everything in there is just off limits to me. I wouldn't touch anything in there. Yeah. And you go into the refrigerator and she has, well, she, we go to Costco and she buys a big bag of chicken for the dog. Um, oh, you know, uh, because the dog, the dog likes chicken and we love our dogs. So, we, you know, dogs are not uh, whole food plant based. Dogs are carnivores. Well, I don't know. I know. I get, I get that I, with Linda in this. My grand dog just visited this week and has switched over to V dog. Well, they, they're, they're true omnivores, but their, their teeth, their digestive yeah. system is yeah. not the same as ours. So, anyway, I don't want to, yeah. you and I disagree about right. that. But anyway, yeah, in my house, see, Ben uses tortillas and I don't. He uses pasta and I don't. He uses, um, oh, what else does he have? More avocado than I normally Yeah, Donnie eat. does too. But he has nothing. We have nothing in the house that's not whole food plant based. Some might be more processed than others. We're getting pretty good about that. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, and of course, I'm, we have no animal and no dairy and no oil in the house. So that takes out. Right. You right. know, and. Uh, so yeah, he and he'll use um, he doesn't use sugar anymore and it doesn't. Really if you sugar. are even uh, I'm extreme in one way. You're an extreme in another way, in that you pref I don't I shouldn't tell what you think, but I've noticed when you eat your food isn't as savory as Ben's is. No, and he thinks his tastes better, but I think mine tastes better because I'm adapted to it. Exactly. And yeah. if I eat. If I like, for instance, he likes to use uh, better than bouillon. A, yes, a I, I don't. I don't want to use broth, that. But it has a lot of sodium in it, and yes. so when I eat something that he's made with that, then I go, "Ooh, I want more." I know. So, sodium is like that. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's and really so sweets. You've taught. I've learned a lot from Esther. Uh, sweets are like that. Even natural sweets, mm -hmm. you know, because I don't use sugar. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's some things, but we used to have peanut butter. That's gone. No, I've never. And um, so, and he likes these soy curls now, and I don't want it. To me, it's just too processed. See, when I take a picture of my food that I eat, I want people to see the extreme. And it's just like in any scientific experiment, there's a bell curve, right? There's people yes. over here, and then there's all the people in the middle, and then I'm kind of an extremist. But I love it because. I this is my body and I I really want to put the best in it. So like I even gave up alcohol and coffee and some don't. I did too. But I just didn't need that. And I just I want whole food as grown as much as possible. And like Chef H.J.'s book, unprocessed. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't even like to use ketchup, you know. And so when people say, 
oh, what did you season that with? And I said, well, these vegetables are wonderful. Yeah. Just as they're grown, I don't want to hurt their feelings. You, you really get to appreciate the taste. Yeah. After you've been on this uh, lifestyle long enough, your taste become more delicate yeah. and you, more, you can taste the complexity of different uh, dishes. Mm -hmm. in the, if you, Two or three flavors instead of just salt, sugar, and oil. Yeah. 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 That's true, too. So it's a simple life that I lead, uh, but I love it. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Um, Al, somebody's asking about your bypass surgery and if you they used veins or arteries. Do you know? Yes, they you, they hardly ever use uh, arteries. I almost always use veins. I had five vessel and they've all clogged up. Most people have three arteries that uh, feed their that nourish their heart, and I only have one. A bit, but what happens is the body has an incredible ability to heal itself if you will just let it. So my body has corollary, corollary. Yeah, I think that's the word. Uh, arteries that have grown around where the um, blockages were, and uh, I mean I can't run a you know a mile and anything like that or I, uh, very fast, but. I can climb stairs, and I, as I said, I hiked five miles at eleven thousand feet last year. I'm looking. I'm not sure I can do it this year or next year, but we're working on it. I have other problems that come up. You know, as you get older, your body wears out. Nothing lasts forever. Mm -hmm. The the thing is, as Dr. Goldhammer says, we want to live as well as we can, as long as we can. Right. And I don't want it last the last 10 years of my life in a, a hospital bed with tube sticking in me and not doing anything. That's yeah. not my idea of life. And to me, it's the most unselfish thing we can do for our children. It's not, yes. not to create a, uh, the, the, amen. The, yes. a dependent, you know. So if they come see me, I like it because they come because they want to be with me, not because I'm sick and they feel like I'm going to die and they better... Yeah. come and pay homage in my family unfortunately we've had a couple people pass away with alzheimer's and that i have seen the wreckage on the family from from those people it's yeah. horrible yeah thank the lord i've got most of my facilities left. yes people yes. question it but that's all right that's all right keeps you humble it, <laughs> no i never humble <laughs> Uh oh, we lost your, we lost your voice. I actually unmuted myself for a minute when I was asking you, about, like, if you had had this information, if you would have done it sooner. See, one of the things Doctor McDougall yes. has worked hard on right. is is and and not of course not not that you should be angry, but the the fact that he wants it to be a law that at least doctors tell their patients. So before your bypass surgery, if you could have been given a choice, because I remember there was a lady that. I knew named Judy that did a video about that, that she was actually angry because she just didn't know there was, it wasn't like she was turning it down. People have the right to have surgery pills, whatever they want, but that people wish they would have known is yeah, all. That is just an excellent point. Choices. Uh, I, no, Choices. Okay. To know there no, is a choice. No, but her, here's the thing, the medical profession they treat you like mushrooms. They keep you in the dark and they cover you with fertilizer. I'm at a stage now where they're promoting things to me. And we have a good friend that I met, uh, Corinne. He's a cardiologist. And I said, Corinne, I don't know what to do. And he said, that's what I'm here for. And I said, I, you know, he said, call me anytime. And that is such a blessing because the one what you talk to one doctor cardiologist they'll say this another one will say that another one will say this um uh, to be honest with you i have a leaky valve and i i know people that have had a valve replacement and it was a big big deal before now they just again go through uh, your vein and your arm or your groin and they do it without invasive surgery but I thought when I first thought about it, thought about it, I thought, well, they only last 10 years. And I'm thinking, I'm not sure I'm going to last 10 years. So maybe that's not such a bad deal. But, I, you know, they don't, they'll present you, if you ask them about any, like uh, bypass surgery or stents or anything, they don't tell you 
the real choice, which is lifestyle, they'll say, well, here's the probability of death of the operation. Wait, wait, that's, I'm not, that's a concern, but the major worry is, is it going to really help me? For instance, they don't, they tell on statins, they force statins on everybody because statins reduce the risk of a heart attack. That's true. But you know what? If you go into the data, they don't reduce the probability of death. Mm. And in return for getting uh, for that, you get, I, I took them for a while, you get joint aches and muscle ache, and you can get other side effects. So that's such a good point. You know, the only thing, and we have to get the information on our own. Yeah. So, well, I know my son's uh, friend was in the heart, was in the hospital with a heart issue. And the doctor said that he needed to go on a plant based diet. And then this overweight nurse came in and he said to her, Do I really have to give up alcohol? Do I really have to give up meat and stuff like that? She said, Oh, don't listen to him. He's a vegan. Yeah. yeah. So, so the nurse was under. Well, she was fat, wasn't she? Yeah. yeah. There you go. So yeah. I mean, we love to hear good news about our bad habits. Yeah. Again, Dr. McDougall. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's just wonderful. Yeah, well, I, I think, yeah, I was just gonna say, I yes, I, I wish when I had my first gallbladder attack that, that someone would have said, you know, all the fat you're eating on that Atkins diet is contributing, but they either they didn't know or they didn't have permission, or I don't think they knew. And then when I had that pancreatitis and almost died along with uh, you know gallbladder problem, um, even then they didn't tell anything. So I just kept going back on Dr. Atkins and eating all that. Fat I know. Pork we, and eating all that fat. You know, it's, it's the most dangerous thing in the world. It's also the most expensive, but dangerous is yeah. Worse. Yeah. Yeah. I think in 1984, after I was so traumatized after my bypass surgery, I probably would have done it. But after. There's a. I'm one of the people that I need something traumatic that help that makes me make a good decision. Well, yeah, I think it does take a crisis for most people because yeah. uh, change is uncomfortable. Yes. And socially, make, making changes that affect you socially are hard too. And you have to. I mean, how do you learn how good you're going to feel ahead of time? We can't. And so you have to go through the process to yes. learn. You know, it's like somebody say, I can give you a pill, and people. Have, this has helped somebody, but, and, and you might be more prone to take a pill than to change a lifestyle, but uh, it's hard to have someone take the leap intellectually or mentally or spiritually uh, without having experienced the joy. It's basically faith, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, you're stepping out on faith that Dr. McDougall and all these plant-based doctors know what they're talking about, and you have to say, hey, my life is worth it. Why not? Why not? Yeah. I mean, was it going to hurt to go 21 days yeah, if you good, you know, good point. You know, and then test it for yourself. Yeah. So Deborah wants to know if you can repeat the name of your Facebook group and Al your YouTube channel so people can follow you. Oh sure, my group's called Esther's Nutritional Journey, uh, and there are two questions to answer when you ask to join, and I want to know what your goals are and if you've watched any of the documentaries. And see, I didn't have to interrupt you. <laughs> it's staying alive. WFPB.com. And uh, you can find my, I think I made a, a note on there how to get to my YouTube, YouTube channel, but I have a lot of videos on there. I have a lot of um, places to go to get recipes, to get all sorts of help. Yeah and uh, products and everything. If you buy anything on anything that I link to Amazon, every penny that I get from that, uh, in fact, I don't get anything, that goes to McDougal. Right. And she gives the process, I hate that you blow your own horn. No, no, I just donate all of my royalties from donuts to potatoes uh, to Dr. McDougal's foundation. We want to help people. That's right. That's right. And it's just so good to give. I mean, this it is. is the giving season anyway. Yeah. And it's just so much more blessed to give than to receive. And when you've received all of this and your life has changed, I mean, you just overflow with um, thankfulness and to, to share it with the world. And also, if you go to my website, there's a link to 
to my uh, email address and I will an I have answered every email <laughs> one time I was on your show AJ and I got too I overloaded my email took me a week just to answer them all but I answered every single one of them Excellent. and I've met some really nice people that way uh, I, her name I can't remember a lady lives I think in Minnesota and uh, she's lost a lot of weight she went whole food plant-based her husband, she called me because uh, her husband had a stint put in and she was concerned. We chatted for a while. We became good friends. So, and I met another fellow, I think, overseas, and he and I, ch uh, ch not chat, but we uh, exchange emails. So, uh, if you want help, if you think I can help you, I will. Yeah. And if you go on YouTube and you just type my name in, some of the interviews that we've had yes. will pop up. Uh, I think most of the interviews with Chef AJ and different ones that we've been on, they pop up. So it's kind of nice if you want to see that. And yeah. There's one where I do a strip tease. Have you seen that one? Yes, I have. <laughs> I have. It's a safe one. Yeah. That's just where I wear something slimming underneath, and then I have on my size 26 dress, and I go da 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 and take it off. And you know, you can, nice dance. You can see the dramatic change. Uh, but it's so much more than appearance. It's so much more than your body. It's so much more than, it's, than you know. It's, for me, not necessarily maybe for you, but for me, it was peace of mind. Yes, yeah. You just, yes. I'm not worried about the, the the big one that's going to hit me. I mean, I I've had heart attacks since I've been on this diet, but they're always minor, and it's always some minor thing that age is sort of caused. Um, but it's not the one, you know, most people don't survive their, I think a third of the heart attacks, they don't survive the first mm -hmm. one. Yeah. And it really helps you in terms of just having a stronger immune system and being stronger against things that might come your way. Not for everyone, but you know, it really yes. has been great. The peace of mind is really yeah, important. You, you and I haven't had COVID, have we? No. And uh, poor AJ's had it twice. No, I did not. You're correct. No. Hey, you know, guys, there's a question from okay. the cat, whether or not you guys, when you changed your diet, if your numbers went down, specifically your HDL, your LDL, and your triglycerides. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh absolutely. All my numbers went down. And I just had a, um, a blood test recently, and they're all within the right range. And my cholesterol is at 115. Yeah. So... It's yeah. really great. You, 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 yeah, you. I don't have the numbers in my head, but it's all I don't good. either. Fact, I just remember that one. In fact, Ruben Guzman, he did a he does this thing where he tells you your age. Oh yes. And so my I don't know if it's my physical age or whatever. He says I'm only 46 years old. Yeah. yeah. So I like that. So, of course, we'd love to hear that. Yes, yes, of course. But no, the BMI is you know way down there, and it's just it's just really exciting to feel like you found the total package. Yeah. No, I I had a, a, a chance. I, I had a I was in a situation where I was talking to a bunch of nurses, and they were all come. I said they they saw my you know what should because they always ask the last name, date of birth, and I said you're eighty seven six. Yeah. And I said yeah. She said you know they would have guessed me for your age, like yeah. my seventy. Yeah. But you know they all say you're healthy. And I said, yeah. No, if I'm not healthy, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, that's right. But it's just freedom, freedom from that well, addiction and having that monkey just, on your back. And yeah. Finding the answer, the final answer, you know. Yeah, I mean, it it just, is the, I know we shouldn't say that. It sounds something, you know, but it to us, it's the answer. Yeah. And we want as many people to enjoy good health as we do. That's right. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a blessing. And if they don't, we just have to love them. Well, yeah, pain. you let them yeah. go. Yeah, you just have to. And Not, I try to encourage everybody. I always say, eat healthy. Yeah. Yeah. They're asking, uh, uh, how, Sherry wants to know, how did you start your own groups? Um, I just went on Facebook and followed the instructions for starting a group. And I think initially I just had, I put a couple of family members in there mm -hmm. just to get started. And then, you know, the word just spread. And um, so it, just, it's, but we there are mechanisms you can use. There's a uh, a national thing or a, a thing on the internet called Meetup or something, 
but oh. but here's a good example because I try to I believe in doing it organic. It's more real and it's it, it, you get better supporters. Is that four of us, you and me, and a couple of other people decided during COVID that we wanted to go out a little bit. So we we found a restaurant that would allow us to come for lunch. So we started having lunch together. And we did that for almost a year, six months or longer. And then we decided people heard about it. Well, come on, you know, nothing, yeah. no, nothing. And so we get 30 people sometimes and we get 20 to 30 people every Wednesday. And you don't have to sign up. You don't have to stand up and say, I've been a vegan for this yeah, right. 37. Why did you know nobody interviews you? You just sit down, you talk to the person next to you. Well, that worked for a while. And then uh, people kept asking me, they said, well, I work, I can't come during the day. And I said, oh, all right. So we started doing it on a Saturday night and we went to this one restaurant. Well, we're, you know, this is something we're just making up as we go along. So somebody pointed out that they're getting, oh, we're eating the same food every time, which is a legitimate complaint. So uh, was it, uh, I can't remember her name, said, okay, on the first or the third Friday of the month, we're going to meet at this place. Or, yeah. or maybe it's for lunch. I can't remember. It's lunch yeah. or dinner. Right. And, but, then, and then, and so we started out with the vegan plate in Roseville. And then we yeah. had added, not did, not deleted, right. added uh, El Papagayo on Saturday night yes. at 530. And then someone came to uh, one of Chef AJ's gatherings at the Zen. Yes. And said, I need something in the South area of Sacramento because I live in Lodi. And I right. said, okay, Loving Hut is, Loving a, Hut, is yeah. there. And so we meet there on the first Monday. And, and there's a, excuse me, first Friday of each month. Yeah. And there's a, a new place over on Northridge. And so uh, uh, um, Linda is starting to go there once a month. Okay. And then there's Himalayan. And then the Himalayan. That's what yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah. So, you build it organically and one person gets an idea that gives another person the idea, but you, somebody has to take the first step. Right. And I, I talk to a lot of, not talk, but I communicate with a lot of people that write me and say, well, I live, in fact, this one gal did, she said, I live in Montana. Well, Montana is not very heavy populated. He says, my nearest neighbor is 30 miles. And I said, you have internet, you emailed me, don't you? So start a group on the internet. I know a friend that yeah. <laughs> she has 15,000 people. Yeah. So she took me to heart. She says, Al, she writes me back in six months. And she says, Al, I did. And I got all these people and they're, they're in Montana still, but you know, they're, they're a group. I, I have um, a nephew named Bruce. Hello, Bruce. I hope you're watching this. And he lives in Milwaukee. And he said, Unc, there's nothing here. I said, there is something there. Yes. You know, I know you could start something. Well, you know, I was not a joiner when I went through this uh, journey. And he's not a joiner either. So I and I think it's harder for men. Probably. But women, you you girls like to get together more than we guys. We want to go outside, go hunting, fish, whatever it is. You know, and, and, you know, two guys spend a day together and never say two words. We had a great time. Yeah. <laughs> women aren't that way. Yeah. I think that's, that's also true. Do people, th people think you guys are married, right? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Except our spouses don't. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's all it counts. <laughs> they know better. Well, Al, Al's just really been great in my life, too, because he's like an older brother, but he's vegan. So <laughs> I, I like that part about him. I have two wonderful brothers who are 88 and 90, and um, I just love them. And um, it's painful to watch them suffer. And um, But I've been as much of a food evangelist as I know how to be and mm -hmm. at some point you just have to know you have to put people in what I call God's hands and say you know bless you and you're on your own journey and I'm not here to tell you how to live your life and I just can do what I do and what has worked for me and if that's helpful to you fine if not well dust your feet off and go on and Esther is my spiritual mentor she my spiritual guru I <laughs> she's incredible I am so blessed to have her in my life um, I get depressed or down or something, and all of a sudden the phone will ring and says, "How you doing?" And you know, <laughs> she, she just cheers me up. And she, 
I tend to be very positive, but you outdo me. I can <laughs> say that. So well, she has helped me and help our, our marriage so much. I mean, just by by reframing a problem, you yeah. can just solve a lot of problems, a lot of problems by just reframing it. That is looking at it in a different way. Yeah. And you think, oh, well, yeah. along that line, I'd like to say it's really important. Our words are so important yes. because we do create our world through our words. And I think it's uh, critical, really critical to understand what, how we finish the sentence, I am, because someone will write to me and they'll say, oh, I am, I am suffering, or I am, I'm not able to do this, or, you know, whatever, and if you just, like you said, reframe that turn around and said, I am getting better day by day, I am getting stronger day by day, I am paying more attention, I'm being more mindful of what I eat, I'm being more thankful for what is in my life, and to the extent that you can, it doesn't deny that there aren't challenges in our lives, but, you know, we get to uh, what we think about, we bring about. Yes. And so if we think it's going to be hard, guess what? We'll create a hard yes, situation. Yes, it will be. It will be. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think as Henry Ford said that you can be, how is it? He said about you could be right or you could be wrong or you, you could think you can or you can think you can't and you'd be right. Yes, both cases you'll yeah. be right. No, that's one. I had never heard that. Yes, that's true. So take advantage of all those people out there that are encouraging you and, and whatever think you're you can do. It. Yeah, I, I met a lady on a cruise that was dying. And she, I said, I said, I don't know if this will help you or not, but it helped me. And she was so inspired. And she says, well, I'll try. And I said, no, you try, you die. Yeah. And I said, you just have to make the decision to do it. And she now passed away, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, I believe in positive of attitude. Yes. I just, it's got me to be 80 yeah. days. Well, I'm not there yet, but I got I can make it yeah. 20 days. I'm confident, unless the truck hits me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, hey, Esther, there's a great question from Susanna. Did you struggle with body dysmorphia after your um, tremendous amount of weight loss? And if so, how did you overcome it? What's dysmorphia? That it's like, it's almost, no, so a lot of times people that lose weight, it, it takes them a while to realize they're not heavy anymore. Oh, hmm, that's a good question. I don't know. I think I've kind of listened to Louise Hay and I can look in the mirror now and say, I love you. And that was a hard one to do. Loving myself just as I am. Um, I don't know. I think I think what I hear more often is people wanting to know what I did with all the excess skin. And what I like to say is I've never seen a death certificate yet where someone dies of ex excess skin. <laughs> You know, and, yes, too. yeah, but you know, if you do it slow, slowly and, and do it healthfully, you know, the body has an amazing way to absorb all that. And yes, the gravity has taken its toll on my life, but, but you know everybody. what? There's good bras out there, it's no problem. <laughs> and so, do I still think I'm fat? No, no, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm really, I'm just thankful. I'm so thankful that that I um, have just found the answer. You know, it's just such a relief. Yeah, I think we all think of ourselves as just normal. Like everybody calls me skinny. They yeah. think, oh, you're skinny. And I don't think I am. Yeah, I had a, I had people in my family say, you know, I was getting yes, too family skinny. members. Yeah, yes. say you're, you're getting too skinny. And people do that when you get skinnier than they are. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So I just say, well, you know, if you didn't have the courage to, to ask me, Esther, what, you know, how much fatter do you want to be when I was gaining weight? Then I don't think you have the right to say to me, how skinny are you oh, going to get? Good. What a good attitude. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. you couldn't be honest and worried about, you weren't really worried about me then, why are you worried now? Yeah. It's because now I'm a threat to you. Well, yeah, I, and I think it's different between men and women. Man, I just want to feel good. Yes. You know, I don't really care what other people yeah. think of my looks. But it does feel wonderful to go from a size 26 to a six. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Dr. Goldhammer always says the person criticizing the person for being too thin is never as thin as them. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah. And especially um, <laughs> like when my sister-in-law died four years ago, I was the only one in the family that could inherit her clothes. Oh, there you go. So that was a blessing for yeah. me. But it's just, I don't know, it's just such a happy life and uh 
you know, you can just turn anything around in your mind and choose. Yes, it. it's it, yeah. it's called reframing. Oh, and another thing I'd like to say to people who are on this journey is don't get addicted to the outcome. You know, don't make your happiness dependent upon yeah. your ability to get to your goal. You know, choose to be happy today. Choose to be happy, thankful today for what's in your life. And and be thankful that you are where you are and in a place to learn and go on. Thankful, and, good and word. just be thankful. You know, we just finished that season, and yeah. Um, and as you tell me a lot, it's not a competition. No, 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 no. We don't. No, that's right. We see. And I think in America, with all the capitalism and all the competition and trying to get ahead and trying to outdo somebody else, it's real normal. To it get, is to get caught in that. But for men, you, particularly, yeah. If you can back out of that and just be thankful that you know what you know now and know that you'll learn what you need tomorrow, what you need to know. Yeah. And there's someone to help you if you support yourself around whole food, plant-based people. You'll get help. Yeah. I don't care what it is. You ask somebody and they'll either probably won't know, but they'll know where to point you. Mm -hmm. And just how to encourage you. And encourage any, you. any life changes is difficult because yeah. our patterns are ingrained. Yeah. And the thinking that allowed us to get fat and heavy and diseased. Took 70 to 80 years and to those, build up. You know, and it could go back to your childhood. Maybe yeah. somebody told you you were a fat little kid or chubby and in fact, Ben's nickname used to be Jum for Jumbo. Oh, really? Yeah, because he was the biggest baby in the nursery. Oh, my. So, I mean, these things stay in our brains, but we get to weed them out. Yeah. And know that no matter what pain, if you've been sexually abused or you've been wounded as a child, you know, there's ways that you can change that and really honor who you are and know that you don't have to be programmed by your early experiences. And for that, I might recommend my newest doctor that I like to watch podcast is is Dr. Um, Gabor Mate. And he talks about addictions a lot and about early wounds in our childhood and how we're still trying to numb that pain. And some of us numb it through meth and through uh, heroin or through alcohol or cigarettes or coffee or whatever it is. And for me, it was food because yeah. I didn't do those other things. I was pure, you know, but I certainly had the food addiction. Do you think that your spouses have food addictions, either of you, or had them? Sure. Yeah. Well, I, I no, in a way, I don't think Ben did because well, not to your extent. Well, no, but he didn't like crave things. I mean, oh. if you give him a piece of berry pie, he'll eat it. You know, but he won't eat the whole pie like I would have. Mm. You know, and when I used to eat ice cream, I wanted the richer the better, so I'd go for Ben and Jerry's, and I would hope that he didn't want to bite, but he just. <laughs> and then if it came to finishing the peanuts or finishing the chips, you know, I would want to finish it because that was my way of getting rid of the temptation is to eat it, yield. Yeah. But he didn't he didn't have that addiction, but I think he had bad food habits. But I wouldn't say that he was yeah. addicted yeah, like I, I was. Yeah, I don't like to speak for other people on addiction. It's hard to say. Like sometimes I get addic addicted to the kind of mouse I use. So, I mean... To me, addiction is a word that's not. But, it, but is there a negative outcome to that? No. So it doesn't matter. It's not well, yeah, I get upset if I can't find it. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't. That's a, that's a world you and I are different on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I understand, I appreciate, and I respect the people that have that opinion. But I, I just, I, I always say that not applicable. To me yeah and like peanuts i mean that used to be really hard you know to to give up but uh yeah well, it was I, only hard for me after i had the first one yeah yeah see, see did, yours is different because right because you really had to cut out the oil to an extreme because yes. you didn't want that in your body you yes. know but for me it was like um oh you show me cookies i mean i have even stolen cookies i have even I, in high school, I worked in the soda fountain and I'd put two scoops of ice cream and probably paid for that. But then after I ate the first scoop, I put the third scoop on. And then you just put all the uh, chocolate on it? No, we didn't oh. have that in the back of the oh. day. But I mean, I just, I just would, it'd be like an orgasm. I was, me. I yeah, I was hooked on that. But what I would do is, is I couldn't not just eat one chocolate chip cookie, but I could pass up the whole group. Yes. 
I, I never had this desire to get up in the middle of the night and go get something. Oh, no. But I couldn't, if I saw it, I ate it. Yeah. In fact, Chef, you, you'll appreciate this. I went to seize candy to get some candy for a friend that we, she sent me a Christmas ornament from the White House and I'd sent her candy because she couldn't get it back east. And so when I went in, I ended up with three samples and I came home with that samples and I I had Chef AJ in my head saying, you know, if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. And I, I thought I was so good and so strong. So I took that bag and I put it in the bathroom underneath the bathroom sink and I left it there for a whole year. And I'm going, nanner, 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 nanner. It's in my house and it's not in my mouth. But you know what? One day something happened to my brain mm -hmm. and reminded me that it was there. And I decided I deserved it. And I went and ate it, even though it was kind of damp <laughs> and not still. the best, but I couldn't throw it away because I had put it on such a pedestal. Well, that's the other thing we're all taught. Don't, if you don't eat this, I'm just going to throw it away. That's what our mothers all said to us. Yes. And so we, you know, I had that trouble. I had to clean my plate. I still do. Yes, I do too. I, because if I take a picture of it and I tell people this is what I ate, then I have to eat it. Yes, but you really don't. No, I do. Oh, okay. I do because I take a picture of everything I eat. Yeah. And I, so if you've got, if I've got a picture there, I eat it. Sometimes I'll spread it over a little bit of time. I, I went to the Himalayan restaurant and I ordered the medium meal and they gave me the large one by mistake. And I said, I'll take it back. And they said, oh, I'll go ahead. And I said, I got, I didn't want to make a fuss because they were being nice. But I, and, and somebody across from me said, well, just eat part of it. And I thought that's never going to happen. Yeah. I have to eat it if it's in front of me. I know. We've always heard that. So I'm very careful what I put in front of me. Yeah. But you can, this way of eating, I can eat as much as I want. I know. I know. It's the best. It's like every day's Christmas. You know, yeah. I appreciate you telling the story of having that piece of candy because I actually had a guest on this week that said that by me saying, if it's in your house, it's in your mouth, it gives it gives people that are in unclean environments no hope. And I, I, if that, I feel so thank, thank you for yeah. saying that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Cause it, 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 it's just, it's, it draws that, you. It, that isn't true. I, I've started with all sorts of bad food in the house and I'm still that, not all sorts, but we have food in the house that, uh, like Dottie will eat things that I will, that, that I don't feel are compliant for me. And we'll bring them home and put them in the fridge and they just stay there. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay, but, but I think, don't you think it depends on the susceptibility of the individual? I mean, because oh, sure. especially early on. And do you think you guys would have been a successful long term if you didn't eventually get both of your spouses on board? Oh, yeah, I think I would have. But I wouldn't because be married I, if I hadn't got her on board. Yeah, you, your <laughs> life is dependent. Yeah, no, I'm serious. No, I did about nine months before Ben came on and I was committed. And fortunately... He liked to cook. So, uh, you know, he just continued making his own food, which is fine. Because at first yeah. he said, I could never eat like you. And I said, okay. But this then I was the one that had to decide how to cook my food. And, oh, yeah, I would have continued because the results were so good. Yeah. But by him being, uh, by him moving that direction and no animal, no dairy, it certainly makes it easier. And I do sympathize with people who live in a mixed marriage. Dottie was... Uh... A, is a wonderful cook took me about two years she had to have a scare to have to get her into it and she now is an excellent cook and it has certainly improved my diet and our marriage so um i don't i would still be i would still be a, a whole food plant-based i might be lonely and cranky and <laughs> <laughs> I I would still be it, but yeah. uh, uh, it's just it's greatly improved my life and our life. Yeah, mine with Dottie's. So yeah, it's, it's, but it's, are, are your spouses happy they came on board? You have to oh, yeah. ask them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think um, yeah, I, I think Ben is he um, he has sleep apnea. He didn't have too many health issues. He was you know he had gotten up to three hundred and twenty pounds, and now he's one hundred and sixty. And uh, he, he he will often say, oh, I'll never be as happy as you, you know, and that's okay. You yeah. know, um, 
But you have two different, I mean, you, just like that, you know, you have two different personalities. Sure. Yeah. And he works out. He goes to the gym as often as he can, rides his bicycle there. And he, I, I think he's, he, he'll he look and he th sometimes thinks he's too skinny now. And he looks in the mirror, you know, but I'll tell you, he looks good. He can tuck those shirts in and, you yeah. know, it's just wonderful. Dot, Dottie wouldn't be here or maybe she'd be deathly ill now. She had stage four cancer. And so she got what got on this diet and she had uh, liver cancer that metastasized into lung cancer after three year, three or four years. And now it's, uh, they did a little bit, tiny bit of radiation and it's all gone away. Mm -hmm. So I think, she, I think I can speak for, I don't like to tell other people how they feel, but I think I can speak for that. Yeah. yeah. Well, Ben never thought he, he just never thought he would ever lose the weight. Well, we I, never, you know. yeah, we never think we're going to be. Yeah. You used to think you were healthy when you were the yeah. good year blimp. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's interesting that your impetus wasn't even so much the diseases, but the, it was because of what you wanted to do in life, which was travel, yeah. which you're going to get, you're going on a three week trip pretty soon. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's going to be interesting to demonstrate how to eat a whole food plant-based diet while cruising. Yeah, how are you going to do that? Did you make any arrangements in advance? Well, we're traveling on Holland America, and they have a vegan, a vegetarian, and a gluten-free menu. And so every night at dinner, you put in your request for the following night from the menu, make your selection, and they deliver it to you the next day. Yeah. And for breakfast, it's uh, oatmeal and uh, whatever fruits available. For lunch, it's a salad bar with balsamic vinegar. And then at night, you go to the dining room and get served a wonderful meal. I have dessert every night. And it's usually raspberries or papaya or mango. Wow. And I have a sweet potato. And you get vegetable. to choose it the day before. Right. Yeah, I've traveled on home. Yeah. So, I, yeah. You just, the only thing is, you, you know, you have to have made up your mind that this is what you're going to do. And Don't uh, order the steak. Oh, no. I know you, yeah, no, but I'm but, just saying. No, for me, it would be, um, you know, seeing all the cookies that are out there, and yeah. the ice cream, and when stuff's free, I want it. Yes, <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, yeah. That's funny. You want it because it's free. Oh, yes. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, I fall for that, too. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so, anyway, after that, it's just... Um, you have to, oh, and the other thing is, too, we get a five... On this trip, we get a $500 drink coupon and you don't drink and i don't drink and so i said to the tour guide i said well can i change that for internet minutes oh. and he said no mm -hmm. and i said well how in the world am i going to use up 500 dollars worth of he says well he says you can take bottled water when you leave the ship because <laughs> they charge you for that so but there is you know if men wants to have orange juice we could have that oh i want to say this we went to a party um, about a week ago and um, normally I just drink the water, but Ben said, oh, I said, you want to drink? And he said, yeah, have him give me one half orange juice and one half cranberry juice. Oh, that'd be good. And that made a nice drink for yeah. him. I, I prefer not to drink calories, but yeah. I ended up having one of those as well. And it was it was kind of nice to feel a part of the event. And, you know, so that worked out good. Hey, Esther, there's a question from a live viewer. When you ate that C's candy, was it just one piece or was it the whole box? Well, no, I, they were samples that I was. I oh. was doing. So there were three pieces. And yes, I ate all three, of even course. though they were damp and not not that good. I, I had see I had put desserts on such a pedestal that I, I almost made them like holy ground. And I just I couldn't do that. But we did have a. <laughs> we did a, a dumping ceremony on our anniversary one year. And even though we weren't drinking at home, we had it there because we just collected it over the time, over the years. We actually took all of that and dumped it out. And now I think it's been about three years now and that cupboard is still empty over the refrigerator. So did you, you, know, did you feel sick when you ate it after not eating that for such a long time? No, I, I was disappointed in myself, but yeah. no, I didn't feel sick. You probably were disappointed. You didn't get the hit you thought you were going to get. Maybe so. I didn't want to go out and buy more, that's for sure. Was uh, that your? Was that the only snack accident you've had? No, no. When we were on one cruise, we ate one of the specialty um, dinner dining rooms, you know, and they brought out this little tray of chocolates 
at the end of it and you know it was free right and i wasn't going to be taken to my room and i wouldn't have access to it so i did eat that chocolate yeah you know, when i would go to dinner at a really nice place and they bring out this fancy whatever it is i will sometimes take a small taste of it mm. just and it never is enough that makes me wish that uh, I would or have had more of it or something. Yeah. I just want, what is, what is it that I, you know, maybe, oh, you should taste this salmon. I used to love salmon. Yeah. I went on a cruise and I had salmon three times a day. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I, cause I thought it was healthy, but, um, uh, and I will taste just a little, just, I mean, the smallest amount, just enough to taste. And, and I think no, it really it doesn't do it doesn't light any fire, yeah. you know. It doesn't well, what are your favorite foods now? And also what do you both eat in a day? One of my most favorite foods is breakfast. And I did a video on this, I forget with who, but uh, I go to uh, go to Dr. Greger and his uh, broil, a uh, 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 rice and uh, green, all that three different uh, uh, Five, five or six different grains together. And on top of that, I put bananas, raspberries, uh, blackberries, and blueberries. And I, I love that breakfast. It just, it fulfills me. And I, I, I just look for every morning. I, I ha that just starts off the day. That's my favorite, even though I, before I went on this journey, never ate breakfast. Oh. What's your favorite? Oh, sweet potatoes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. You eat them raw for pizza. Yeah, I have eaten them raw. Uh, they're mine too, though. They're, I love sweet potatoes. I love regular potatoes. I love gold potatoes. I mean, I'm just a gold, I'm just a potato person. And then it's so simple what I do. Like lately, I'd say maybe the last, oh, maybe three months, I've been waiting to eat until after 11. Yeah, in the morning. In the morning. And so what I do is I start out with a cup of warm water in the morning, and then I'll have a second cup of warm water, and I'll put in a cube of previously frozen lemon juice or a whole lemon. And when I do the whole lemon in the Vitamix and pour it in ice cube trays and freeze it, and then put a cube in the water, there's enough fiber yes. in that uh, lemon that seems to take away any hunger, you know, or, and so that I, so I don't start eating to about 11. Mm -hmm. And then I now... Uh, try not to eat. It's not a hard rule, but I try not to eat after six at night because I want my body to be able to do to do the healing it needs to do and not be. And plus, I don't want to be in the kitchen that much and I don't, yeah. don't want to be thinking about food that much. So I really am down to basically like two meals a day now. Yeah. And it works for me. It's not for everyone, but it's just it's kind of like being able to do another experiment like I did following Dr. McDougall. And now I'm kind of trying this to see how it fits. So I don't recommend anybody else doing it, but if we can learn to eat when we're hungry and stop yeah. stop when we're satisfied, then and and to take time to be mindful of what we're eating and to chew things thoroughly yeah. and to really appreciate it uh, and not be just going to the next thing. But aside from sweet, and then I also love. Oh, here's what I eat: fruits, vegetables, grains, and beans. That's yeah. my diet. I don't eat bread. I mean, rarely. No, but give them a recipe or not a recipe, a meal. Okay, meal. Well, okay, let so me, let me do that. No. Okay. No. So for <laughs> so for breakfast, I mean, I don't have breakfast. So my first meal will be it's just leftovers. I I have fruit and vegetables, grains and beans already cooked up in the in the refrigerator. So it's just a matter of pulling out what I feel like reheating. So I'll pull out a previously cooked sweet potato, and if I have some greens beans, I'll add that. Add some broccoli, I'll do that. Add a piece of fruit. And then I try to limit my beans to one cup a day mm -hmm. on average. And uh, I know how to cook beans and rice together in the Instant Pot. And so that's just so simple. I have yeah. my, my starch, my vegetable, my fruit, and that's it. You use the Instant Pot a lot. Oh, yes, yes. I yeah. love my Instant Pot. Do, do my dump soup in there, you know, at the end of the week when you're ready to throw food away, put it in the in the Instant Pot and make some dump soup. And it's Tell funny. us about dump soup because Tom Kramer has a dump soup recipe and he's going to do it on the Truth About Weight Loss Summit next year. What is your dump soup? Well, I start out with a can of diced tomatoes and then I add a can of water and then I just empty my refrigerator. So whatever's in there that needs to be cooked, it could be onions, it could be garlic, it could be 
leftover, it could be celery or carrots or leftover um, be green beans, or it could be cabbage or just whatever in the refrigerator I want to use up. And then at the end, if I have some um, power greens from Costco that are getting a little bit older, then I just stir those in at the end. So it's just whatever you have. And then I usually use um, Costco's no salt organic seasoning to it. And that it's so simple. It's just so simple. And just whatever you have. And just, you know, if you cook up the foods that you want to eat, then just pull them out and reheat them. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I make my meals in two minutes. It's just uh, so fast. Uh, a, a very simple meal that I love. You said sweet potatoes that are heated with meat. Dottie, sometimes she'll be tired, didn't want to cook. We bake a sweet potato, corn on the cob, and broccoli. Mm -hmm. And that's all. Yeah. Nothing else. And uh, that's a really good uh, three. You know, I grew up, you had to have three things on okay. your plate. Yeah. And, uh, but your dump soup's good. We oh, yeah. And the thing that was so nice with my uh, family visiting this week is that we kind of because we eat the same thing every day like ben eats the same thing every night yeah, you know yeah. and so having company we felt like we should vary it yeah. a little bit more so it was like oh and now what can we do this time you know but yeah. but beans and rice are always good and they homemade, are. homemade vegetable soup's wonderful and um and salads are nice i don't do as many salads as some people do because i would rather have potatoes <laughs> Yeah, it, it just fills me up but better. You gotta get your greens. Yeah, you have to. Get we greens. try to have salad every night. We don't yeah. make it, but we yeah, almost every. But day. since you can live on potatoes alone and survive, you, you know that kind of takes away the idea that you have to have a big variety of food. You don't. Right, but Doctor B says that you have more different, thirty different kinds of food. A week. I know, but Doctor Dub doesn't say that. He okay. says eat your potatoes. All right. Then you got to listen to one. That's right. That's I right. Otherwise, that. you get confused. You do. And you get too many rules. You do. That's yeah. a, you're right. So I just, it's just nice. So there's a question from Lynn. Do either of you eat vegan chocolate? No. No, I don't. Um, Why? I don't think so. No. no. See, I, I, that's the difference between whole food, plant based, and yes. vegan. No. Because you can eat a lot of unhealthy food as a vegan. Yes. Because I know French that French fries and oil. Oh, yes. And even going to vegan restaurants where they cook yes. with oil and they cook with maybe too much salt or whatever. So there's a big difference. Yeah. And when I want to be bad, I can say, oh, well, it was a vegan meal. Now, I am a chocolate or I was. And I, this is a tip. Dr. Greger has a healthy, if you go on his website, you get a healthy smoothie. And he uses regular cocoa, but I buy it from Amazon is defatted cocoa. Regular cocoa is 30% fat. And of course, fat is my nemesis. So I use defatted cocoa and um, I use uh, a banana and uh, ice cubes. And, and I, think, uh, I think that's about it. And so I do get my chocolate fix once in a while, but I have, it's like a lot of things that you've given up and I don't miss it that much. I mean, I, three, five years ago and I said, oh, I love it. And I would get those probably once or twice a week, but now, eh. Yeah, see, I just don't want anything that reminds me of what I used to eat. Yeah, I know. See, it doesn't bother me. I don't mind. Like, I make nice cream. Uh, we have one of those ice uh, ice cream makers, and I just take frozen bananas, put a little of that chocolate in it, and that's all. No other ingredients. Just ice cream and defatted cocoa. Oh, it just tastes like. I used to. Be, <laughs> I was addicted to uh, what do you call those things with the softies? Called? Softies, yeah. yeah. I'm a softie. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh, Jay's asking, in what way was Dottie or is Dottie non-compliant? And you can answer for Ben too, Esther. Okay. Um, she. I, I, everybody has a different tolerance for fat in their diet, and. She doesn't, she's not as strict about fat as I am. For instance, she'll make a salad and the, the uh, what, uh, McDougal and probably you will recommend that one teaspoon or a, a quarter, an eighth of an avocado. She'll put half an avocado in it. And she doesn't worry about oil like I do. 
I mean, but she doesn't eat any animal products. And uh, but she, I won't order. So I won't order. Or when I go to uh, one of these, um, bring your uh, what do you call it? Bring your potluck. Own, potluck. I if I don't know who made it. If, if H A didn't make it or you make it, I won't eat it. They may have put some oil in. They may have put something in it that that's not good for me. And she's not anywhere near like that. Yeah. Was Daddy ever overweight? Because she's so petite now. Um. Well, let me say this: she weighed not when I knew her. She weighed a hundred pounds when I met her, ninety-eight or a hundred one, and. Uh, so no, I'm not that I know of. No, yeah. I'm unfortunately I'm one of these visual people, and I'm not attractive to overweight people. Sorry, mm -hmm. but I'm honest about it. Yeah. Well, I like Ben. I mean, he is no animal and no dairy, and um, and we don't have any oil in the house. Yeah. But when we go out for a Mexican dinner, he'll eat a chimichanga, which is fried in oil. Yes. Yeah, so and, and Daddy will too. Yeah, and he'll eat uh, if he goes out. Well, maybe you guys should switch couples. <laughs> oh, no, 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 thank you. I think we help each other. No offense, but no. <laughs> yeah, just I'm just kidding because you no. guys the same way. I'm just teasing. Yeah, them. yeah. Well, well, uh, well Ben and and uh, Daddy have mentioned the fact that they're they're more like each other th than they are like I don't know. Yeah. But, but then opposites attract. Yes, yeah, something like well, that. Well, and the thing is, Ben exercises more than I do. And he is a man and he burns his calories differently. And he he is not an extremist like I am. Right. And so he's same he, with he, he, yeah, yeah, he's softer about it. So he'll he'll have bread, he'll eat uh saltine crackers, which I don't eat. Uh so he eats more processed food, but still vegan. You know, yes. So that's why that's a, that's a fair assessment. Yeah. Of both our spouses. Yeah. Yeah. So they're they're vegan, but not necessarily unprocessed or whole food plant based. Yeah, they neither one. Well, Dottie had a crisis late in life, but uh, Ben didn't have the problem with the knees like you did. No, and the weight he the weight just melted off of him. Yes, it he did. Never tried. No, and I didn't either. I mean, I, I think men just lose weight easier too. I, yeah, it is true. So, so the things that he has in the house, they don't tempt me. He wants more savory food than you. Well, he yeah, he wants, yeah. I'm like him. I want savory. Yeah. I like plain, but I yeah. couldn't I couldn't subsist on your diet. Uh -huh. I, mean, I could. I would do well, but I mean I it would yeah, you, you might not, not be say, satisfied. You might be satisfied. As long as you had the mental idea that you needed more or needed a little more excitement or something. But you know, like even now. You know, like for Thanksgiving, Ben did eat a piece of uh, berry pie. Yeah. Non, non vegan. Well, non yeah, Dottie pie. actually really cheated and she had a small piece of turkey. Oh, she actually. Went, no. Yeah, yeah, she did. But where did you know, she get it? Oh, she, we had turkey for the whole family. There was 12, 13 of us here. And I had the most beautiful dinner. I had. Uh, she made ma mashed sweet potatoes with nothing in them, and everybody loved them. But she, all, I said, those are for me. Don't even. <laughs> and she made up string beans just for me. She made up um, uh, stuffing for the everybody else, but yeah. she put in the turkey. But she made stuffing for me, and then she made up two gravies, one with turkey gravy, and then she made up gravy for me. And she ended up eating my gravy because she said it tasted better. Wow. Yeah. So I, I that those were all, all starches, yeah. but those except for the gravy. But those were that was a and we had it for four days afterwards. Yeah. Well, that's another thing Ben does. He makes gravy. It's kind of like Mary McDougall's gravy, just out of uh, onions and yeah. And, I don't and, know what and she garlic, makes and yeah. I think he uses some better than bouillon and some cornstarch. You know. Yeah. But see, I don't want the cornstarch in my life. Oh. Okay. So I I just you know. But it feels good to do what I do, and I, and I feel emotionally safe. Yeah, yeah. Safe. You, well, yeah. As long as we're satiated, it doesn't matter how we get there. Yeah. I mean, I people look at what I, I mean, people like you. I mean, I could when I was 18 years old, I went to visit my grandmother in Pennsylvania, and she says, 
well, I'll cook you any, I think I'd graduated from high school or something. I'll cook you anything you want. What would you like? I said, corn on the cup. Oh, and she yeah. said, okay, and what else? I said, that's it. Yeah. And she went out and bought all, the, we had this huge thing of corn and that's all I ate. And to this day, if you put corn on the cup and I don't put butter on it, I don't put yeah. salt. I just eat it plain and I love it, Yeah, you know? And so it, it whatever, Floats our boat, yeah. you know? I think sometimes when Ben says he wants the food to taste good, what it probably means is more salt. Good because, day. because he'll use like paste picante sauce and he'll use some ketchup yeah. because he wants it to be a little bit more yeah. when he does it. I had to give up salt because of my kidneys. Yeah. So I've never had a problem with that. So like Chef AJ, what do you say about you never give up more than don't go on a stricter diet than what no, I, I, I've always, and you know, people say, oh, you're so strict. You're so perfect. I have always said, if people really listen to me, do the least restrictive diet that you can do that yes. will get the results that you say exactly. you want. Because I find that there's a huge mismatch between what people say they want and what they're willing to do. And yeah. so people say, oh, Chef AJ, I want to be skinny like you, but I want to have cheese and I want to have alcohol. Well, then you're, it's not going to happen for you if this is your genetics. So just decide what your lowest sustainable weight is rather than your lowest attainable weight and yeah. you know, restricted diet you can do so so that's the thing it's not a you know anyway i'm uh, there's a question if either of you eat tofu um i eat it sometimes at restaurants but i don't have it in the house because it's too high in fat and uh but when i go to loving hut not loving hut but um vegan plate Sometimes I'll get a soup and they have tofu in it. So I'll eat it there, but I don't buy it and cook it. At home. I, I don't. Uh, I worry about the fat, but I just don't like the consistency of it. Now, I do eat it because Dottie will make a fantastic um, uh, a casserole of uh um, uh, marinara. So I'm trying to, I can't think of the word. Like I'm, lasagna? Lasagna. And she, instead of uh, the cheese they use on the lasagna, she makes it out of tofu. She gets the the firm and lets the water drain out. And it tastes just, I know you don't like because it tastes, but it tastes just like yeah. the, uh, the cheese. No, I liked, her, I liked her lasagna. Yeah, yeah it is so good. Dinner. But that's the only time I eat it. Uh, vegan hot, they all know that I hate, I, I, mean, I just don't like it. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any trouble not eating it. <laughs> but, but when I was, but when I was losing my weight, I don't think I ate it because it was not allowed on the Mexican yeah. weight loss it's, program. It's, it's, it's why, yeah, it's not hard to give up for yeah. us. Yeah. No. Do you guys exercise every day? Yes. What do you do? Well, I, um, uh, Dottie and I walk the dog a mile and a half in the morning and then three or four times a week, except now in the rain and cold. But I go out and I have a um, a tricycle. It's a, instead of I used to bicycle, but after I'd ride for an hour or forty five minutes, I'd have to have the seat surgically removed from my butt. <laughs> so I gave up on that and I got a recumbent tricycle. And uh, it's it's a uh, e bike. It has a motor and a battery on it. But you still get you, you get out there for an hour and a half and you go 20, 30 miles, and so you you get plenty of exercise. And then I live in a multi-story house, so I go up and down. I have to go down half a flight of stairs to my garage, and I try to be as active as I possibly can. I find that if I don't, I don't sleep as well, and I get depressed. Mm -hmm. Exercise is just a marvelous antidepressant. You just take it. If you get depressed, go for a walk, and you will get undepressed. I Trust me. Mm -hmm. Works every time. Yeah. So. I have done a lot of swimming, uh, but you know, exercise is twenty percent of the success, and the food is eighty percent. Oh, I think it's more so, than that. So the you know you don't have to exercise. It's it, no. it's good for your mind. It's good for your body, uh, but it's not the secret to weight loss. No, it's, I, it's the food. I, I don't even consider it. I I do it for other reasons. I told you, uh, sleeping and. It, uh, well-being and uh, I love to be outside I would much prefer to be outside than sitting I, I don't like watching tv you know? mm -hmm. I don't like to be in front of my computer but that's what I do yeah yeah 
Esther, do you have sleep apnea? Did you have sleep apnea? Yes. Is it better now? Well, I don't use the machine anymore. Then it's better. Oh, it's gone. I mean, as far as it was taken off of my, you know, at, at the doctor's office, you have your after office office visit report, and everything that I had before is gone. Everything. I have a clean slate, so I just am so excited. Seventy-two. Yeah, and even at seventy-nine now. Oh, I know, but I mean, yeah. it started. All oh, right, it didn't start till then. That's true. Yeah, it's all gone. It's just, it's wonderful. And I used to take sleeping pills. I don't sleep a lot. Um, I'm kind of a weird person that way, but Dr. McDougall says as we get older, we only need five hours a night. So I take him at his word. Yeah. Well, you know, you will know if you don't get I know. I figure if I'm sleepy, I'll fall asleep in the car or I'll fall asleep yeah. watching TV or something. But yeah. uh, and I love my my meditation during the night. Yeah. You know, it's not that I get up and start working around the house and use up a lot of energy, but it's my quiet time. It's the time I listen, it's the time I come up with my word for the day. And it's the time I often then post my word in the middle of the night. So people will see the, the different times of the yeah, night that I do yeah. it. But, you know, I'm just happy. I just, I just, um, I feel like my body knows what it needs and wants. And yeah. I don't worry about it. I think people worry too much about, are they getting enough of this and enough I, of that? I think you have to get in touch with your own body. Yes. You have to listen to it. And your own mind. And, you know, and that too. And we're so busy and there's so many distractions in life that we don't have yeah. time to listen to that inner voice. That's why I cherish you as a friend. You remind me of that a lot. Yeah, it's important because everything has to come from within. We can have all these people telling us what to do, but we have to own it our, ourselves and want that for our lives, you know. Yes. And want to protect what we have and who we are and know that we all have value just as we are. Yes. No hoops that we have to jump through. We are good <laughs> enough just as we are. And well, we self-love is important. And it's not a egotistical self-love. No. It's the happiness of self-acceptance. Of knowing that you don't have to be perfect to, yeah. to arrive. You know, in fact, none of us are perfect. But I wrote this morning, it was kind of cute about how was is Dr. McDougal perfect? I says, I guess I'm not the judge of that, but boy, has he shown me the way. And I'm so thankful to him. Yeah. And no, I'm, I'm thankful for all the people out there that are that are showing us uh, different facets of how to live this way. You know, so we all have our little ministry, as I say. Yes. Wow. Hey, where can people get your book, Esther? From donuts to potatoes. Oh, yeah. It's on Amazon. And it's also Balboa Press. And I think they've reduced the price on the soft cover from $27 to $20. And so that's that's the easiest way to do it. But I don't think it's in bookstores. It, it ha you had to put it in within the first year for the bookstore to have the right of return the items. But that's a good way. I'll, I'll get a link and I'll add that to the show notes. Mm -hmm. and so, guys, if people want to connect with you, what's the best way? Well, I've already told everybody, email me here. Go to my website. There's a lot of resources on there. There's a lot of videos for those that don't like to read. And uh, send me an email, and I will respond. I send out recipes to people. Oh, that's what I got so many. I had a leek pie was my oh. recipe. And I said, say, is that and people, I still get, that was, I don't know, a year ago or so. So I'm easy to get a hold of. You're on uh, Facebook. Yeah, I'm on Facebook under Esther's Nutritional Journey. And uh, on there, I post my phone number and I post my email address. Uh, and then on YouTube, if you type in my full name, it's on there two different ways. One's Esther Loveridge and one's Esther Liebeck Loveridge. But there's lots of videos out there. But if you're in my group and you ask a question, I I respond. To, I try to respond to every single. And sometimes people will send me a message in Messenger, you know, on uh, Facebook. Yeah. So I, I'm pretty accessible. I mean, once in a while, I'll say, okay, I've done enough, you know, three or four hours in the morning and I'll be off. And I don't know how well I'll be able to stay in touch on the cruise, but I'll do my best. And if they want to see you guys in person, they can come to our conference in Sacramento. Yes. Dr. Lyle, Dr. Goldhammer, Dr. Alviera, Dr. Nedley, and Tammy and Tom Kramer and Linda Middlesworth. 
on the 15th of January, tickets are early bird pricing for about another week. So they can come meet you in person. Oh, yes. sure. Well, yeah. I don't know who would want to. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we're willing to be there. We're, we will be there. Yeah. You know, basically, it's the reason that I feel that. And I think you do, too. It's why we're here. Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. And we just get back our, from our cruise like midnight the day before. Oh, I know. So we'll be, but we'll be there bright eyed and bushy tailed. You can talk about how you were able to be successful on a cruise. Al, do you think you'll ever write a book? No, I, I, I was married to a writer and uh, I have bad feelings about that. No, I don't. <laughs> People, I, everybody asked me that. I told, I mentioned that to my daughter and I thought she was going to die laughing. <laughs> No, if you did God. write a book, if you did write a book, what would you title it? Oh, come on. Um, I did it my way. Nice. Now, Esther, do you, might you write another book? Yes, I've wondered if I should do sequels, you know, by collecting all of the words that I posted on subsequent years. Uh, right. Yeah. I, and then what I've done, too, is because that book is inspirational and it does have my daily postings, you know, from 2019 collected in that book. What I would do on a second book is I would also include my instant pot cooking times, something in more practical tools. And I also have written a thing called um, a Beginner's Manual. And that is in my Facebook. But if somebody wants to send me an email, uh, I can send them the link to that. Because the Beginner's Manual tells about you know how I got started and how I followed you know Chef AJ and Dr. Lim and Dr. Doug Lyle and Dr. McDougall and uh, even Jeff Novick and so forth. Yeah, yeah Jeff. You know, it's a real good. I just got inspired one day and I sat down at the computer and wrote this up. And so I think it's a good adjunct to my book. So I don't know if people want, you know, in fact, I didn't want to write the book in the first place. And people said, well, you need to write a book. And I said, well, why should I write a book when I give you these words every day on Facebook and they're free? And people said, well, no, we'd like to have it. So that was the impetus to write in the book. And subsequent books, I, I just don't know if I would do every day or do certain ones. I don't know, but I certainly would want to have more how to do the program uh, information. And that's what the Beginner's Manual does. Well, I think that would be a great idea for a book. Or maybe you and Al could write one together. Yeah. Oh, well, that would, now I could do something like that as long as we got a really good ghostwriter. <laughs> what do you mean? Because at least for me. Oh, I'd be your ghostwriter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not so much about technique. And I guess that's one thing I liked about writing the book mm -hmm. is to let people know that everyday people can write a book. It can happen. Wow. Okay. You know, and it doesn't have to be perfect. I did not have my book edited. And there's a couple of mistakes in there that I've seen. But you know what? That's just the way it is. Well, you taught me a lot about mistakes. So, yeah, you're right. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just be real. Yeah. Oh, you guys are fun. You guys are great. It's such a pleasure talking to you. Oh, thank well, you. Thank you. It's an honor to be on your show, AJ. Yes, it is. I, I, Al, do you know the song from Saturday Night Live, Fever, Staying Alive? Yes. Yeah, that be you should have that, you know, as an intro, if you can, to your YouTube videos. Oh, I think there might be some copyright problems with that. But everybody, when I first had this, I had this uh, little graphic on my business cards and people said, oh, you're a dancer. I thought, no. So I put a trike on my business cards. Oh, yeah. So uh, I pass out cards left and right. I, I influence a lot of people that way. Sure. So. Yeah, that's I do too. It's really fun just to. Oh, yeah. You yeah. have pretty cards. Yours yeah, just pretty pass cards. it out. Yeah, people can't believe the before and after pictures, but I know I wish we had thought to get the women's world because I have it, but I can't leave the broadcast to go get it. It's, no, no, it's no. in my closet. You know, you guys should maybe think about doing a YouTube channel or a regular show together. I I have thought about that. That's more my medium. I'm uh, more You're a talker. You're a talker. I, well, not more a BS or maybe, but no, I'm I like to respond to people or to respond to the events as they happen. Yeah. In the flow. In the flow, yes. Yeah. Well, and then also I'm not that organized, so it just comes off the top of my head. Yeah. <laughs> and I like to use humor. And that's hard to do in a book. 
you know, my, my humor doesn't come through as well in a book. So, but you're right. I'm more of a talker. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys really are an inspiration. And, you know, like you say, everything in the perfect timing, because if you had done this earlier, you might not be able to inspire the people you're inspiring now, showing them really that it's really never too late unless you don't start yeah. now. That's right. And yeah. we would not have had the pain that we've had to yeah. overcome. The journey you know? of a thousand miles begins with the first step. That's right. And you have to take that first step. It'll yeah. never happen otherwise. Yeah. So just decide. And i that's one of my theories. My favorite one is you just, you don't try it. You don't wonder about it. You just do it. You just make a decision. Every success I've had in my life, I've just said, I'm going to. And then would you say, Henry Ford, you can decide yeah. to do it and you decide to yeah, fail. Either you can or you can't. can't. In both cases, you'll be right. And that's so true about yeah. us. And I like to throw out, you know, when we get married, we don't say, I'll yes, try. That's a good one. We say, I do. do. Yeah. You and, know, you're not just, you're married all the time, not just during the week. Right. <laughs> well, that was your, that's her. I don't want to take credit for Yeah. That. Yeah. That's true. And just, you have to decide, but it takes a while to get to that point where you. But can, you, that's a decision. Then you, then you, you make. make that decision, and then trust yourself to follow through. Because we often say we're going to do something, and then something happens, and we don't follow yeah. through. But and you know what? However, whatever steps a person can take, maybe maybe you just say, "What meat could you give up forever?" Uh, maybe just choose that. There's and, no willpower involved. No. It's just a decision. Right. Yeah. And if you wanted to, you know, it's the jumping in the pool versus going in slowly. I'm the jumper. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just one terrible shot. Yes, it's over with. <laughs> and then it's over with. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you got to work at your ankles and br bring it on all up. I, can, I don't like to do that. And the other thing I like to tell my people is there's no guilt, only learning. Yeah. So don't beat yourself up at all for anything you've ever done because you're still you're responding to some way of numbing some bad feelings you've had and you know there's all these psychological reasons why we do what we do but the point is just love yourself love your family love you know just love everyone in spite of our differences and just be kind just be kind that's that's what we need to do you know i think you have a second calling as a as a minister oh she does <laughs> she's a yes she's my own personal minister You're so lucky well i'm so lucky to call you my friends and i'm so happy that we live near each other and we can see each other regularly yeah me oh, too thank you i we're, we're yeah. so blessed too you to have brought you. a lot into my life aj yeah really. we should you know what we should do i just found out i'm using a technology called restream which enables me to stream in real time to facebook youtube and twitter even though this is really a youtube show and they just announced that you can actually do it from your phone now and maybe we can stream one of our uh, get-togethers and then people can really see us all together and fun. Yeah. yeah so let's think about doing that i just it's so hard to say goodbye but i do have to teach me class so thank you guys so much for what you do for people and for your inspiration. And also think I do love both your spouses and tell yeah. them the same thing yeah. there. Yeah, gen gentle bed and Dottie. I like Dottie. Dottie's got a little feistiness in her because if she, be. if she didn't, yeah, you gotta be to be married to Al, you know? <laughs> That's right. And if they ever want to come on together, I think that would be a fabulous show. I would love show. to have her yeah. come on. I would encourage her, but that's not her. And so that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. either way, it would, just be, it would be fun to hear their perspectives if, if they ever feel like it. I understand. You know, um, Tammy uh, interviewed uh, Ben and I, and um, he did really well. He did really well. It's one of my favorites because we knew Tammy and Tom. And so it was comfortable for him. Yeah. Well, know. I could see Ben is more of a quiet guy, but Donnie yeah. is so is so social. She seems like she would be great, but I guess she just doesn't want to do it. No, That's she does, it's not. She's camera shy. She's, no, it's she. She's it's, so pretty, though. People need to see how pretty she is. I, I, can, I, can you hear all this, Dottie? Oh, uh, she's sitting over she's here. So, she's so pretty. I just think she, she's beautiful. Right? I know she really is. And maybe, maybe she'll, maybe she'll make a, a recipe. But anyway, guys, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, and I'll, you, I, and I think I'll see you maybe in a week if we end up going to Zest Cafe for oh, our husband's birth. Our husband's birthdays are like two days apart. Yes. <laughs>
And then Al's is coming up soon. 88 and feeling great. 88, looking great and feeling great. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. We're starting a little bit earlier tomorrow at 10, 15 a.m. I hope you'll come back because we have a very special doctor who's done a lot of research to do the presentation on what to do if you get cancer. His name is Dr. Peter Rogers. So please remember that we're starting at 10, 15 a.m. tomorrow. Take care.